Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon 11970 and I thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video and hopefully learn about how to get away from the system. And the only way to do that is for us to learn that you're in that system of slavery. You know, I'm going to explain to you how they did it and how they manipulate words and use our ignorance to be able to get us to volunteer to do something that we didn't we weren't even aware of so this is not going to be based on conspiracy it's not a tinfoil hat wearing situation as some people like to say we're going to use actual proof through the constitution and we're going to show you how they manipulate words to entrap and enslave you without even knowing it because as you ever heard in law from any police officer or any judge out there Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So, let's first show you, just so you can see, this right here, the 13th Amendment. Okay, this was made on December 6th, 1865, ratified, I believe, in 1868. The exact day is really irrelevant. Now, this 13th Amendment was meant to free the slaves. They didn't free the slaves the way you think they did. They not only have them still in servitude, just in a different way. And not only did they do it with African Americans, because that's what you think about when you think of slavery, because that's what you're programmed in the educational system of the United States, which is owned by the corporation. Let's go over what it says in the 13th Amendment. And I quote, neither slavery now get this, very, very, very close attention to this, nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Section two, Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Now let you take a look at this so you see I didn't change anything. I didn't add anything. That's exactly what it says. Now, let me explain. There's a reason for how they word things. And if you don't know about the law and you don't know about the meaning behind words, that's how they trap you. So they defined slavery as involuntary servitude. Pay very close attention to that. Involuntary servitude. That means you're not volunteering to do something. Now, I'm going to show you that if you are a U.S. citizen, now I can't speak for other countries because I don't know how their laws and constitutions are created, so it might be a little different. So you'll have to check with your own areas to verify your own constitutions if you even have them. So I can only talk about the corporation known as the United States. You are not a slave because of involuntary servitude. You're a slave because of voluntary servitude, and I'm going to explain why. Now, if you want to see the whole details of how this all started, I have a 49-minute video I made about a week and a half ago that right down here on the bottom of the screen, in the last 15 seconds of this video, you're going to see a link. Please click on that. It's a 49-minute video. It's long, but it's going to give you a lot of information. I go over the 14th and 15th Amendments. I talk about your birth certificate, things of that nature. We're focusing on the fact of how you could prove that you are actually a slave to the system. Now, I've made several times about the fact that in law, silence is the same as giving consent. Now, I've used this example before, and so I'm going to use it again for people who've never seen this video before or any video like this. If a bunch of people were going to a restaurant and they ordered dinner, they're going to pay for their own food. And at the end of the night, they order dessert and they order a piece, uh, uh, they order a whole cake. They slice up the cake, give out to everybody, and there's one slice left. And if I, you know, I'm using this as legal terms, if I say out loud and make a legal claim for that piece of cake and say, you know what, I'm going to take that last piece of cake. Well, the other people at that table, they have choices. They can say, go ahead, take it, confirming my claim. They could say, no, you can't take it, denying my claim. They could make a compromise, which is acknowledging my claim, or they can say nothing at all. Well, in law, if you make a legal claim for ownership of something that has been unclaimed and nobody challenges it and they use silence, it's the same as saying, go ahead and take it. 
because what they're saying in the law is they're not arguing it, they're not disputing it. So in law, silence is the same as agreeing. Now, to become a slave of the system, what they did was they used the excuse of the Civil War to blame it on freeing the slaves. Now, slaves were considered property. But here's the thing. If you owned slaves, you had to take care of them because your well-being, your financial freedom came from the work that the slaves did. So you couldn't go around just killing them all because if you were a cattle rancher and your, your business was cattle, well, you'd be pretty stupid to kill all your cattle. Because there goes all your income. So I'm not saying that slavery was good. I'm not saying they, the people were f treated fairly because they were dragged into something they did not want to do. So I'm just making the point of the process of how they went from the, a certain type of slave to the slaves we all are now. So please keep that in mind. This is not racial. Original property meant that the people who were owning of those slaves had to take care of them. In other words... They had to put food in their bellies. They had to provide shelter. They were going to protect them. They were going to give them clothing. But the slave had no right to own anything. So let's say, for example, I was a slave before the Civil War, and I got this shirt from my master. Well, just because I'm wearing it doesn't mean I own it. The master gave me the shirt to wear. So even though I'm wearing it and it's, it was given to me, because I was a slave, I have the right to use it. And this is where they get you. Everything that you own, if you have ever registered to vote, gotten a driver's license, paid your taxes, and they have the little box where it checks off, are you a U.S. citizen? If you said yes, you have volunteered. Because here's the thing. The legal definition of the word citizen is the fact that, one, you have to be born or naturalized in the United States. Now, not the United States of America, which is the actual country. We're talking about the United States, which is a corporation that's located in the District of Washington, D.C. So it's, it's part of that is to be born or naturalized in the United States and then get the second part. And this is in the 14th Amendment. It is the fact that you have to be subject to the jurisdiction of the United States. Now think about those terms, because if you don't break them down and you don't understand them, you'll just think they're just words. What is a subject? Well, a king has its people. Its people are the king's subjects, which means they have to do what the king commands. So you're subject in the jurisdiction, which means the area that qualifies for that particular range. Now that could be unlimited. Because if you work for the, if you open a franchise called McDonald's, which is part of the corporation of McDonald's, you could do it anywhere in the world, but you're subject to what their rules are. That's why a McDonald's franchise in California and a McDonald's franchise in France and a McDonald's franchise in Canada and a McDonald's franchise in Japan have to do whatever that corporation tells them to do. In other words, they can't sell Wendy's food or Burger King food or all of a sudden decide to sell seashells because if the corporation says you have to serve McDonald's food only, it doesn't matter where you're located on the planet because you're in jurisdiction of that corporation known as McDonald's. So when you register to vote or you pay your taxes or you just check off that I'm a U.S. citizen and not knowing what it means, well, you have still technically consented to that slavery, that servitude of the corporation known as the United States. So this is how they get away with it. Well, according to this Constitution, the 13th Amendment, slavery, according to the 13th Amendment, is illegal if it is involuntary servitude. Well, if you don't argue the fact because you don't know about it, well, then you're consenting. So it becomes voluntary servitude, which makes slavery, under that definition, perfectly legal. So this hat, even though I bought it, this chain, even though I bought it, this shirt, even though I bought it, this house, even though I bought it, this book, even because I bought it, is not mine. I don't own it. Because I considered myself a U.S. citizen because they lied to me and lied to me by not telling us the truth. They're allowing me to hold on to it. Because think about it. If you owned a slave, you owned property, 
the master had to pay for the food, had to pay for the shelter, had to pay for the protection, had to pay for the clothing. Setting them free, but still getting the benefits. In other words, we as people, we have to pay taxes. If they tell us we have to put poisonous toxins and chemicals into our children called immunity shots, we can have our freedom of choice, which is do what you're told to do or get your children taken away or thrown in jail. There's your freedom. But if they tell you that you have to put your chemicals into a baby, if you say, no, you can't do it, that's like a slave telling his master, no, you can't whip me. Of course he can. Your property. You've ser volunteered to serve. So you're under the jurisdiction. So that's where I want people to understand this. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Now just imagine this. Just imagine before you're born. The world hypothetically has the answer to everything in the form of a picture. And if you get that picture, it describes everything, who you are, where you came from, the purpose of life, why you're, he why you're here, blah, blah, blah. And somebody who's in control takes that puzzle, that picture, smashes it up into a billion different pieces, scatters it all over the planet. And when you're born, they're supposed to, they know in their mind that for you to find out that information, you first have to know that puzzle exists. Then you have to know you're responsible for finding the pieces. Then you actually have to go out and look for them to formulate the picture. And then you have to understand what the picture is. How do you do that if no one ever even tells you there is even a puzzle that exists? That's how they get you. Because they don't tell you about what happens when you sign your birth certificate. They don't tell you that the word citizen means you are subject to the, the jurisdiction of a corporation. They don't even tell you that the United States, in all capital letters, is actually not a country. They're not talking about the landmass. They're talking about a piece of paper. Because, because a corporation is nothing more than a piece of paper. If my name is John Smith, and I want to run a business that's called John Smith's, and I turn it into a corporation called John Smith's. All I'm doing is, is registering that name with the government. They pay the, they, you pay your contribution fee and they send you back a piece of paper that says title, corporation, John Smith. Does that mean that's me? No, that is the corporation. A corporation is nothing more than a name. So when you look at your driver's license, your birth certificate, any form of government identification, it's in all capital letters. You have voluntarily decided to serve. You've created a treason against your own country because this country, the United States of America, was founded by union states. They were all individual countries. And in 1871, they actually rewrote the Constitution with these new amendments starting in 1863 with uh, 1864, right after the Civil War, because they love distractions. That's why you know things like the National Defense Authorization Act was done right on New Year's Eve 2011. That's why the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 was done right before Christmas. They love to place laws into effect either during times of war or times of holidays when people are distracted. The Civil War bankrupt this country because wars cost money. They borrowed money from the Rothschilds and the Bank of, New uh, Bank of London and the City of London. Ever wonder why if you look even on the J.P. Um, J.P. Morgan's bylaws, that all of their fiscal gold and silver that they claim to even have is located in the Cindy, uh, Bank of London. Because when it comes to taxes, they can only tax foreign people. And when you realize we're a corporation known as the United States, and we are subject to the jurisdiction of the King of England, well, we're all foreigners, we can be taxed. Can't tax a free man, but you can tax a corporation. So this is what I want people to understand. They went from the slaves who you had to pay all the stuff to provide for to now they're on their own and buying everything that they need for themselves. But the government can take it at any time. Don't pay your taxes and watch how quick they take your bank account or they take your property. You don't pay your mortgage, they take your house. Why? Because you don't own it. Right of usage. You volunteered your servitude. So they use fancy little words in these documents for people that we don't get educated by. That's like having somebody caught from the mafia and they're on trial and they use other people in the mafia to investigate the problem. Do you think they're going to go against any of the way the mafia runs? You think they're going to find anything that will expose them? No. 
So slavery is not what you think it is. It's the fact that they can take whatever they want from you at any time. You have to pay taxes. You have to obey their laws. In other words, if you drive over 55 miles an hour, they can actually penalize you and tax you. You have volunteered your servitude. It's not involuntary. Because if you see what the Constitution says, it only exists because it's the um, consent of the governed. Well, once you know law, once you know that silence is the same as compliance, the mere fact that you don't argue it in law means you're consenting to it. So it's not illegal. So anybody that's complaining about their civil rights, basically, you, you don't know what you're talking about. So you don't want your civil rights, you want your natural rights. So I'm going to keep this... Um, Short. I'm going to end this right here. Look at this book. This is the this is not the original Constitution. This is the original Constitution said the Constitution for the United States of America. They changed for to of, which basically means the for meant that the document was meant for the people. Of means the people are for the document. If you don't know that, ignorance is no excuse of the law. So what I want people to do is, if you've watched this, I want you to give it a thumbs up. I want you to share this video or make your own. I want you to watch this with somebody you love and get this out. Because the government can do what it's doing to people, like pepper spraying the people, throwing people in jail, taking away their civil liberties, taking away your guns, because you're a slave. You just don't know it, and you don't know the meaning of it. Now you do. My thing is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to allow them to continue to do it? Because then, why are you complaining? I'm making my part. I can only do so much. And my part is to educate people. Because you can't teach a bunch of kindergartners physics the first day that they just learn the alphabet. You have to teach people in stages. So what you do with this is up to you. That's a beautiful thing about free will. You can choose to do whatever you want, which includes the wrong thing. I hope you will say that I'm going to verify this stuff myself. I am going to research this stuff. I am going to talk to my governor. I'm going to talk to my mayor. I'm going to talk to my president and ask them why. The day we all decide to no longer consent, consent is the day that tyranny ends. It's that simple. The only reason they get away with it is because of our silence and our ignorance, which once you don't know, when you don't know about it, that's a perfect excuse. Once you now know, now that you've watched this video, you now know. If you choose to do nothing, then it's your fault. That's up to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Spread this video. Share it.